Ah, uh, excuse me, but, can you see? I gathered the courage to ask the woman who regularly requested me as her driver. She gripped her white cane tightly and looked up at me. Our eyes met through the rearview mirror, and I knew. Yes. Her gaze was so direct and unwavering, I couldn't look away, as if drawn in. My name is David. I'm 26 years old. I work as a taxi driver. After graduating from college, I became a company employee, but I couldn't produce good sales results. On top of that, the constant need to win started feeling like a burden, so I quit. I stuck it out for four years at the company, pushing myself to the limit. Without thinking much about what came next, I left. I survived for a while on my modest savings, but being 26 and jobless wasn't sustainable. I guess I need to find a job. What kind of work should I do next? I bought a job magazine and muttered to myself while idly flipping through it at home. I didn't have any particular skills or certifications. I didn't even have a hobby I could proudly talk about. On my days off, I would go for drives. That was about it. As I was thinking about that, I stumbled upon a taxi driver job listing. A driver, hmm. Mumbling to myself, I got up from the bed where I'd been lying and pulled out the resume forms I had picked up along with the magazine. I decided I'd apply for the jobs that interested me and at least go to the interviews. I called the number listed in the ad, and they asked if I could come in for an interview the next day. I finished writing my resume, took an ID photo, and got everything ready. For the first time in two months, I put on the suit I used to wear every day. Even though it had only been two months, it felt like forever since I last wore it. I arrived at the taxi company ten minutes before the scheduled interview time, walked in, and spoke to the woman at the front desk, who seemed to be a receptionist. Hello, my name is David. I'm here for the interview today. When I said that, the woman gestured for me to sit in a nearby chair and went to call someone. After waiting a few minutes, a man in a suit approached me. Hey, hey, you must be David, right? He spoke to me in a cheerful tone. Feeling a bit nervous, I stood up and said, yes, I'm David. It's a pleasure to meet you. I spoke with a serious tone, still showing a hint of tension. Oh, right. Please, have a seat. Do you have your resume with you? When he asked, I took the resume out of my bag and handed it to James, the manager. Hmm, hmm. He seemed like a naturally cheerful guy, making sounds like hmm and oh as he looked through the resume, never going completely silent. You quit a good company, huh? Seems like a waste. Why did you leave? His casual way of speaking made me relax even though it didn't feel like a typical interview. I just got tired of competing with others or benefiting from someone else's mistakes. As soon as I said that, I felt like the interview was going downhill. I see. Corporate jobs can be tough. Honestly, work in general is tough these days. With a small sigh, James sounded like he truly understood. I just gave him a wry smile, unsure of how to respond. By the way, did you know you need a special license to be a taxi driver? A regular one won't cut it. Caught off guard, I probably showed my surprise on my face. You need a taxi driver's license. If you're planning to stick around long term, we can't cover the whole cost, but we do offer financial support. It usually takes about a month to get. So, what made you want to become a taxi driver? As I listened, I started mentally calculating the costs. Being jobless for another month and having to get a new license on top of that weighed on me. James stared at me, as if waiting for an answer. Oh, sorry. 
The reason I want to be a driver is that when I was a kid, our family went on a trip, and the driver told us all about the tourist spots. I thought that was amazing. I like talking to people, so I'd love to show off all the great places around my hometown too. My hometown was somewhat of a tourist destination itself. Since my sister and her husband lived with our parents, I had been living on my own since graduating from college. I see, yeah, the drivers who really know the area can tell you a lot. Not that I'd know, I'm not a driver myself, huh? James answered a question I hadn't even asked and then laughed at his own words. I realized then that he was truly a cheerful person. In the end, it was decided that I could work as a driver once I obtained my taxi driver's license. Thanks to James' arrangement, I could help around the office, wash cars, and do other small tasks while attending driving school. This way, I wouldn't completely drain my savings. During the day, I worked at the taxi company, and after clocking out, I went to driving school. Even after a month had passed, I still hadn't gotten my license. Since I was working during the day and only had limited time for driving lessons, it couldn't be helped. I was eager to finally start working as a taxi driver. One day, after finishing work and having no lessons that evening, I was leaving the company when I saw a woman collapsed on the side of the road. I quickly rushed over to the woman. Are you okay? I called out. I reached out my hand, but she didn't take it. She was a bit on the heavier side. Looking down, she brushed the dirt off her knees and turned toward me. It seemed like our eyes met, but she quickly turned away and picked up her glasses that had fallen. Noticing the white cane at her feet, I realized she couldn't see. I picked up the cane and tried to place it in her hand, but she let out a small, ah. Sorry, I didn't mean to grab your hand like that. I picked up your cane and was just trying to give it to you. Touching the hand of a woman around my age without permission was definitely an awkward move. Though it was a spur-of-the-moment reaction, I felt bad afterward, so this time I spoke more clearly. Ah, uh, I'm holding your cane. Is it okay if I hand it to you? When I said that, she nodded slightly. I then handed the cane to her. Thank you. That was all she said before she slowly walked away without looking back. The next day, when I went to work, I realized my name badge, which I always kept in my bag, was missing. So I emptied the contents and searched carefully, but it was nowhere to be found. In the men's locker room, seeing me scatter my belongings, James asked. Hey, what's going on? Did you lose something? When he asked. I answered clearly. My name badge is missing. I might have dropped it somewhere. As I was about to check my bag one more time, even though I had already searched it thoroughly, James spoke up. No worries, just ask the office staff to make you a new one. Okay, I replied, a bit downhearted. The office staff grumbled as I asked for a new badge, but they made one for me. Then I started my work. After a little over two months at the taxi company, I finally got my taxi driver's license. Now I could finally start working as a full-fledged taxi driver. I was excited to begin this new chapter. On my first day driving on the road, James arranged for me to only handle pickup requests. Waiting on the streets can be tough for beginners. For now, just focus on pickup requests to gradually get used to the job as a driver. Oh. And here, stick this somewhere visible in the car. With that, he handed me a name badge with my photo on it. Soon after, I got my first call. It was my very first customer. Since the area around the tourist spots was filled with restaurants and shopping centers, taxi requests were pretty common. All right, David, take it easy. You're probably nervous since it's your first day, but just be polite with the customers. As he said that, 
James gave my shoulder a friendly push, encouraging me. Yes, I'm off. In preparation for this day, I had memorized the local roads, shortcuts, and backstreets for when traffic gets heavy. I also made a list of my recommended restaurants, writing them down in a notebook, ready to share with customers at any time. With that notebook and my new name badge in hand, I confidently got into the car. On the first day, the constant nerves and mental fatigue made me feel completely exhausted. However, as the days went by, I stopped feeling so nervous and gradually got more comfortable with my job as a driver. About two months later, while driving around the city, I received a call over the radio. Hey David, there's a pickup request, and you're the closest. Can you take it? It was perfect timing, as I had just dropped off a passenger. Yes, I can. I'll head there now. Usually, James would hang up after that, but today he added something. Oh, and by the way, the customer is visually impaired, so just keep that in mind. This was different from what I was used to, and I felt a bit of nervousness creep in. When I arrived at the designated location, I got out of the car and rang the doorbell. A young sounding voice answered, Hello? Thank you for your request. This is your taxi for pickup. As I said that, a voice came through the intercom. Thank you. I'll be out in a moment. After she said that and hung up the intercom, a few minutes later, I heard the sound of the front door unlocking. The door opened, and the woman came out alone, holding a white cane. I found it a bit odd that she opened the door so readily, just trusting the word taxi through the intercom, especially since she lived alone. It seemed a little unsafe. Still, she didn't appear suspicious or concerned. Please, she said. She then extended her white cane. All right, it's this way, I said, pointing toward the car, but then I realized she couldn't see my gesture. Catching myself, I asked her. Uh, please place your hand on my shoulder or arm. I'll guide you. She hesitated for a moment, then placed her hand on my arm, holding her cane in the other hand, and followed me. I opened the car door, and after making sure she was seated, I spoke to her. I'll close the door now. With that, I gently closed the door. I got into the driver's seat and asked her where she was headed. She replied that she was going to a shopping mall in the neighboring city so I said understood and stepped on the accelerator. Heading toward our destination. Every customer is different, some like to chat, others prefer silence, some work during the ride, and others make phone calls. I usually figure out if someone wants to talk after exchanging the first few words. But with her, I couldn't start a conversation based on things I could see, like the scenery or the crowds. I wasn't sure how to approach this. I decided to stay quiet and focus on driving. Then, she spoke up. Have you been a taxi driver for long? Her sudden question caught me off guard, and I glanced at her through the rearview mirror as I answered. No, I just started this job two months ago. Please let me know if there's anything uncomfortable. I answered politely. While paying close attention to my driving, I made sure to drive as safely as possible. Was there something about the ride that felt off? I started to feel a little concerned. No, it's fine. You seem to be driving safely, and I have no complaints about the ride. Hearing that, I felt a sense of relief. Could it be that she wanted someone to talk to? Thinking that might be the case, I decided to start a conversation. I used to be a company employee, a sales rep actually. But competing with others and stepping on people to get ahead started to wear me down. So I quit my job and became a taxi driver, wanting to try something completely different. I didn't expect her to be interested in my story, but I figured it could be a good way to break the ice. I see. 
I guess being a salesperson must be tough with all the quotas, right? I work from home since, well, as you can see. We continued chatting about the kinds of jobs we'd been interested in or what we would have liked to try, and before I knew it, we had arrived at her destination. We've arrived. Thank you for using our service. I told her the fare and received the taxi voucher from her. As she was about to step out of the car, she asked, May I ask your name? I was a bit taken aback. In the two months I had been doing this job, no one had ever asked for my name before, so I was a little nervous. What if I made a mistake and she reports it to the company? With those thoughts running through my mind, I anxiously told her my name. My name is David. She smiled and said, thank you, before stepping out of the taxi. When I went to work the next day, nothing was mentioned. I had been worried all day, wondering if she had filed a complaint about me after asking for my name the day before. I felt a bit ashamed of how easily rattled I was, but also relieved that she hadn't filed any complaints. A week passed after that, and I continued my usual work. Then I received a message over the radio, a pickup request with me specifically requested. David, you've been requested. The client is Yvonne. Please make sure to be courteous. Oh, and by the way, she's visually impaired. Hearing this from James, I immediately remembered the woman I had driven the previous week on the same day. Understood. I'm heading there now. I found it surprising that a taxi driver could be requested, but I made my way to her house. When I arrived, I got out of the car, just as I had done before, and rang the intercom to let her know I had arrived. Your taxi is here. I called through the intercom, and soon after, she came out. Thank you for using our service, Yvonne. I said as I extended my arm for her to hold on to. Thank you. Yvonne said as she placed her hand on my arm, almost as if she had seen me extend it. All right, let's head to the car. I didn't feel anything unusual about the gesture and simply followed the same routine as before. That's all I thought of it. Once we got into the car, Yvonne gave me a different destination than the one from last week. Understood. I confirmed the location and started the car. Thank you for requesting me. Are you meeting someone today? I asked without thinking. Ha! Huh? No, I'm not, but why do you ask? Surprised by my question, she responded with a question of her own. Oh, sorry, it's just that you look so nice today. I thought it might be a date. Is it inappropriate to ask something like that these days? I said, worried about compliance. Oh, are you talking about harassment? Oh, don't worry, I didn't take it that way. I immediately apologized, feeling a bit panicked. Harassment? Yes, you're right. I shouldn't have commented on your outfit. I'm really sorry. Feeling flustered, I quickly apologized to Yvonne. It's fine. I didn't think anything of it. Since I work from home, sometimes I like to go out just to refresh myself. I've made Wednesdays my day to pamper myself, so I like to dress up and go out, Yvonne explained. As she said this, I glanced at her through the rearview mirror. Our eyes seemed to meet, and sensing my thoughts, she continued. You're probably wondering how I can do that when I can't see, right? It felt like she had seen straight through my thoughts, and I became flustered, quickly trying to deny it. No, that's not it. But I couldn't find the right words, and ended up mumbling awkwardly. I have a helper come over once a week. They help me by hanging clothes on the rack, each labeled in braille. That's how I can tell them apart. Makeup, however, is a bit beyond me. As she spoke, Yvonne lowered her head slightly. 
I see. It must be tough emotionally, just working from home all the time. What kind of work do you do? When I asked that, she made a typing motion with her hands. I do transcription work on the computer. We continued having this casual conversation. Over time, after receiving several pickup requests from her, I found that my perception of our relationship shifted slightly. From merely driver and customer to something more like familiar acquaintances. Because of that, I sometimes accidentally started talking about the scenery we were passing while driving. Yet, Yvonne always responded as if she could see exactly what I was describing. It happened a few times where I forget that she couldn't see until after I dropped her off. And that feeling of something being off would hit me afterward. One day, after this had happened several times, something similar occurred again. That day, I received another pickup request for Yvonne and had her in the car. As I drove her to the destination she had specified, I noticed a new crepe shop had opened in the area. Excited by the sight of a long line of young people and families, I started talking. Wow, look at that. It's a new crepe shop, and even on a weekday, there's a huge crowd. I'd love to try it sometime. But maybe when the hype dies down a bit. Right after I said that, it hit me that Yvonne couldn't see the scene, and I considered correcting myself. But before I could, she spoke up. You're right. The crepe shop has such a long line. Yvonne said, with a look of surprise and admiration, as if she were gazing out at the scene through the window. I happened to catch her reaction in the rearview mirror, and the feeling of unease I had been experiencing solidified into certainty. If my suspicions were correct, I couldn't understand why Yvonne was pretending. Even though it had nothing to do with me, it bothered me enough that I gathered the courage to ask. Um, Yvonne, can you actually see? I confronted her with my suspicion. Her face, which had been smiling just moments before, suddenly turned serious, and she lowered her head for a few seconds. Then, as if making up her mind, she looked up and answered my question. Yes. That was all she said. Why? I mean, it's none of my business, but why pretend that you can't see? Is there some reason behind it? Yvonne stayed silent in response to my question. If there was some reason for her act, it wasn't my place to pry further. I decided not to press her anymore. But this time, Yvonne spoke up. Could we just keep driving for a while? Her expression was serious. But what about your destination? Is it okay if we just drive? I almost mentioned the cost, but held my tongue. I'll pay for the extra time. Hearing that, I nodded without saying a word. I drove aimlessly with no destination in mind. Yvonne remained silent. The air in the car was tense and heavy, filled with an unsettling quiet. Just as I was thinking of bringing up a different topic, Yvonne spoke first. Earlier, you asked if there was a reason behind it, right? She said this, and I nodded slightly. I've always been on the chubby side, ever since I was a kid. Back then, it was fine. People would say I was cute, that I looked plump and adorable. But that's because I was a child. By the time I reached middle school, other girls started worrying about dieting and their figures. I tried to do the same, but my parents were always happy to see me eat, and they prepared delicious meals every night. I couldn't bring myself to tell them I was on a diet, so I kept eating. My friends were getting prettier, while I just kept getting bigger. Eventually, I became embarrassed by my body. Even when I walked with my thinner friends, if something happened, people would help them. But I'd be ignored. After experiencing that over and over, my confidence slowly faded. As she spoke, memories from the past seemed to flood her mind, 
and her eyes began to well up with tears. Then, one day, I saw a scene in a TV drama where someone, who was visually impaired and had a similar body type to mine, fell and was in trouble. In that moment, I thought that people would always help someone like that. I also thought it would be easier not to care about other people's stares anymore. I know it's wrong, but... I started imitating that. Yvonne took out a handkerchief from her bag, wiped her tears, and then pulled something else out. Holding the object tightly in her hand, she began to speak, as if recalling a memory. Do you remember this name badge? She held it up, showing it to me through the rearview mirror. Wait, isn't that my old name badge? How do you have it? Looking apologetic, Yvonne started to explain. This fell when you helped me in front of your company a while back. I kept meaning to return it but never could, so I've held on to it all this time. I'm really sorry. I tilted my head, trying to recall the moment she was talking about. Did I help you, Yvonne? Hmm, when was that? I asked her, clearly unsure and unable to recall the moment. It was about two months ago. You ran over to help me when I had fallen. Little by little, the memory started coming back to me, and I said, oh, letting her know that I had remembered. Oh, right. I think it was on my way back from a job interview. Yvonne stared at the name badge, smiling softly as she recalled the event. At that moment, I thought, people really are kind to those who seem vulnerable. But when I saw the seriousness in your face, I felt ashamed for pretending. Since you came out of a taxi company, I figured you were a driver. And I always wanted to tell you the truth and apologize. But the time we spent together, with you thinking I couldn't see, felt so enjoyable. I just couldn't bring myself to say it. I'm really sorry. She bowed her head and kept whispering, I'm sorry, over and over. Well, I mumbled before I could even think of a proper response. Yvonne seemed to misunderstand my hesitation and apologized even more. Oh no, it's not that I'm upset. I actually kind of understand where you're coming from. I mean, everyone has moments where they feel it would be easier not to worry about other people's gazes. Even I struggled with feeling the pressure of competing with others or needing to be better than someone else. It made me feel awful. But pretending to be blind, well, maybe now's the time to stop and start believing in yourself. I thought I had to be a company worker after graduating, but honestly, I love being a taxi driver now. So I hope you can find something like that for yourself too. As I finished speaking, we arrived at our original destination. Yvonne put her white cane back into her bag and stepped out of the car on her own. Thank you. I feel so much better after talking about my feelings. I think it's time for me to re-evaluate myself. Her face was now full of smiles. The next week, there was no pickup request from Yvonne. For a while now, she had been requesting me regularly for pickups. It must be because I figured out her secret. She probably doesn't want to ride with me anymore. What had become a regular part of my week now felt strangely empty. The following week passed with no request from her either, and I started to accept that I might never see her again. Though I was feeling down about it, I continued my usual taxi duties. Six months later, just as she was becoming a distant memory, I received a pickup request over the radio from James. David, we've got a pickup request. It's from Yvonne. Take good care of her. As James gave me her address, my heart pounded loudly. Understood. I kept my composure as I responded over the radio. Yvonne, it's really her, right? I couldn't believe she had requested me after six months. 
What could this be about? I found Yvonne's actions puzzling. Following the familiar route as instructed, I headed toward her house. When I arrived, I pressed the intercom as usual. Hello? A bright, energetic voice answered. This is your taxi for pickup. I responded as usual. I'll be right out. She said, and then the intercom went silent. After waiting a minute or two, the front door opened with a soft click, and a woman stepped out. There was no white cane in sight. Thank you. The woman who responded wasn't the Yvonne I once knew. Her slender legs, her long, fair hands. Her flowing hair shimmered with a glossy shine. And her face, Yvonne's face, radiated confidence, beaming a bright, glowing smile at me. Yvonne, is that you? I asked, my heart racing as I looked at the woman before me, so different from how she appeared six months ago. Yes, it's me, Yvonne. Since then, I've apologized to all the people I deceived and told them the truth. Instead of hiding myself, I've spent the last six months learning to stand tall and be confident in who I am. I've also been dieting, and now that I feel lighter, both physically and emotionally, I enjoy dressing up, and I even appreciate the way people look at me. As she spoke, Yvonne smiled brightly, happily sharing her story with me. Shall we go? With that, Yvonne quickly made her way toward the car. Still trying to process everything, I jogged to catch up and followed her to the car. Once inside, Yvonne gave me her destination. I'd like to go to that crepe shop. The popular crepe shop that had opened in the area for the first time. Even after six months, the long lines still hadn't faded. Understood. After telling her that, I started the car. Even after getting in, Yvonne's face remained cheerful. As we approached the crepe shop, her smiling face turned serious, and she took something out of her bag before speaking. David, I'd like to return this name badge. She said, handing me the badge she had picked up for me a long time ago. I took my hand off the steering wheel briefly to accept it. Thank you, I said. Then, she began to speak. When you found out I was lying six months ago, it felt like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. I couldn't keep up the charade forever. And deep down, I wanted someone to call me out on it. Maybe that's why I never felt right about it. When you told me I could find something meaningful to pursue, I realized what that something was, it was becoming confident in myself. Confessing my feelings to you, and going to the crepe shop together. That became my goal. Her sudden confession left me speechless, and I was caught off guard by the word confess. Confession? Yvonne blushed, looking straight at me through the rearview mirror, her eyes filled with sincerity. Ever since you helped me the first time, I've been interested in you. If you'd like, would you join me for crepes? Her gaze was direct and serious as she made the request. Wait, what, no way. I was so surprised by her words that, while focusing on driving, I hurriedly pulled the car over to the side of the road. Um, what should I do? I can't. I blurted out in my confusion. Yvonne's face turned sad as she responded. I figured as much. Seeing her look down, I waved my hand quickly, trying to correct the misunderstanding. No, no, that's not what I meant. I just can't right now because I'm working but I'm off the day after tomorrow. How about we go then? And, uh, should we exchange contact information? I turned around and pulled out my phone, looking at her as I spoke. Yes, absolutely. Yvonne said as she pulled out her phone. Sometimes, all it takes is a spark to start something new. And those feelings will always reach someone. We exchanged contact information and made plans for the day after tomorrow. 
I had a feeling that something was beginning, and my heart was racing with an exciting, pleasant anticipation.